It's new comic book day, but I have not got to my comic book shop today. I'll probably go tomorrow. Um, when I got here, I got a package in the mail from good old Lone Star Comics. Um, I remember part of what I ordered, but not everything. So uh, I'm going to do the hoary old unboxing. Maybe I will regret it if this is too well packed. I started out, I mean, I always keep thinking there's some stuff I'll order from Lone Star that I can't find elsewhere. Um, and I always like the condition of things at Lone Star. And, uh, but then I had some recent comics that I couldn't find. You know, like my, my shop had ordered, supposedly added a book on my pull, but it only started coming with issue number three. So I needed issue uh, one and two to start reading it. So Lone Star seemed like a good place to go and get a bunch of stuff that I needed. So this is a nice heavy brick of comics. There's actually a list here of what I got, but I won't look at that. <clears throat> Some of this I now see is our comics I'm collecting with my daughter. We both like Amethyst, Princess of Gemworld quite a bit. We have most of the Amethyst comics, but while I was at it, there were a few I'd never found. So I ordered them and the, the prices were very good. Okay, so let's see, what's this? Amethyst, Princess of Gem World. I think this is the, I'm not sure. I think this is the second series, number 15. Um, yeah, this one that says 10 of 12 is from the first series. Oh, that's a nice cover. I assume it's by Ernie Colon. It has a bit of a Gil Kane look. Is this, I think, and that looks like Ernie Colon too. I think Ernie Colon was on the first three Amethyst series, or at least the first two. And then I decided to fill in a few um, Atlas comics that I hadn't been able to find. Here is Morlock 2001 and The Midnight Men. Issue number three. I think it was originally called just Morlock. And all of these Atlas comics, none of which lasted more than four issues, many just three, they all seem to change by issue three into something else. They all morphed. Because none of this is in order. Oh, this one is, is it written by Geffen? So I think this is maybe the, the third Amethyst series. I have a I think maybe it was written by Keith Geffen and drawn by Esteban Morato. Could I be right about that? Or maybe Morato inked it. It says Esteban Morato on the cover there. Um, the signature, but that doesn't mean he did the inside. I'm not sure. This is number three. I think we'll find the rest of the series in here somewhere. So uh, the one, the comic that my comic book store failed to order me or get me all the copies I needed was The Beautiful Death. So hopefully it's good because I have issue three. So I didn't want to start reading from there since it's a modern comic. Um, another Amethyst, seven of 12. Um, love the way um, Dark Opal's face is drawn. So this is the first Amethyst series. Then we switch to the third Amethyst series, which was a, just a four issue series. The one that is Looks like it's Geffen, Newell, and Murato. Last of four. That looks, I guess that's Murato. It looks very P. Craig Russell. I like those colors. Oh, and I was missing some issues of The Unsound. My shop also, for some reason, did not get me all of The Unsound issues. That's a great cover. I wonder if that's a variant. Um, and... While I was at it, another thing that I like to buy, if I can find reasonable prices, is Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane, from the Bronze and Silver Age. So I grabbed some that had prices that seemed good to me. Um, that one's number 22 from the uh, 25 cent, the first 25 cent era, the one I, which is one of my favorite eras of DC Comics, uh, with the 52 big pages. This is number 121. So that comes just before it. Sorry for all the jumping around here. Um, now we're back to the first series of Amethyst. 
Uh, no doubt an Ernie Cullen cover. Love, love a winged horse. And Lois, Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane, Lois Lane, number 161. That trick mirror pulling Superman apart. Oh, and these have Rose and Thorn in it. I'm, I'm quite interested in Rose and Thorn, the kind of schizophrenic superheroine. Uh, <clears throat> My Death by Lois Lane. This one is number 115, still part of the, I think, part of the 25 cent era. Uh, that's a cool cover. <clears throat> Back to Amethyst Series 1, the 12 issue mini series, maxi series. 12 of 12. Gotta have that. And then I grabbed these Night Force. I grabbed a few issues of Night Force that, according to my CLZ app, I don't have. Although I wonder if I do have them and I just failed to put them in the CLZ app. Um, but either way, now I have the complete Night Force series, which is either 12 or 13 series, 12 or 13 issues. Marv Wolfman and Gene Cullen. That's, that's an awesome, creepy horror cover there. Another issue of the Unsound, Unsound number four. Did Unsound end with number five or is there more issues coming? I don't know. I'll have, when I read them, I'll find out. Amethyst Annual. I don't know if this connects with the first series or the second series. I'm guessing just from the look of it that it's the first. I don't know. Oh, and I'm missing, a, ooh, this is a really gross cover. I'm missing a few issues of Maxi Mortal. In fact, the first two issues, I think, so I, or the first, is this the first? This is the first issue, so I haven't read it, even though I have quite a few issues of it. So now I'll be able to start reading Maxi Mortal. This is an issue of Lois Lane I bought recently, but this copy was in much better condition, although it's got a date stamp on the cover. I did not see that. I'm not a fan of the date stamp. I know a lot of people like that. I guess I can live with it. The other copy I have has parts of the cover chewed away, and this is kind of a cool cover. Uh, continuing the Lois Lane. Sometimes I wonder, were they trying to make Lois Lane kind of like a black-haired Doris Day? I don't know. Um, careful, Lois, that madman's loose somewhere in this area. Don't worry, Superman, I can take care of myself. Daily Planet, Madman at Large. That must be the Madman's shadow there in his hands. Creepy. Oh, this, I like this Maxi Mortal cover. Maxi Mortal number two. So I guess I was missing one and two. Amethyst, Princess of Gem World, Giffen, Fleming. This is number 13. I think this must be from the second series. I guess Keith Geffen took over, Geffen or Giffen, Keith Geffen took over the writing at some point. Looks like Dr. Fate is in the picture, uh, literally, that's interesting. Morlock 2001, number two. I think I had all three issues of Morlock 2001, uh, which was far in the future in 1972 or 74 or whenever it was. I had all these. The Atlas Comics must have come out during a year where suddenly it was much easier for me to buy comics because I bought a lot of Atlas Comics as a kid. And this is the four issue, the third series, the, the four issue mini series with Morato Art number one. That's, I'm really kind of psyched for this Morato Art. Hopefully it's not too, you know, you know how the ink in the, um, he's such a fine, has such a fine ink style Sometimes on the newsprint that gets lost, like the ink starts to spread out over time. Hopefully that hasn't happened. Oh, and just because it wasn't expensive, I bought another copy of this, my first Captain America comic that I ever read. Um, so I think I have three copies of it now. Atlas Comics Police Action. I did not buy these police action ones when I was a kid. I didn't want to read police stories then. Now I want to collect every Atlas comic, Atlas Seaboard comic that ever came out, which is maybe, what, 90 of them. And police action starring Lomax, number two. I guess that other one was number three. I have number one already. <clears throat> and the beautiful death, 
number one, which must have been an oversized issue because it cost six bucks. That's a pretty cool cover. <clears throat> I wonder if this is gonna turn out to be one of those European albums reprinted. And last, but definitely not least, another Lois Lane from the 25 cent era. Uh, number 117, it's got some Rose and Thorn in it, and someone called Lady Danger. I'm assuming Lady Danger will be a reprint from the Golden Age. That's it. This has an interesting perspective on the cover. Superman, look, the whole world has turned upside down. So, yeah, I like that cover. I wonder who drew it. It looks like it was inked by Vince Coletta. That I can sort of tell. At least that the feathery lines there look like Vince, Vince Coletta to me. Was this the period when Vince Coletta was the art director at DC? Or maybe that came a little later. So that's it. That's my, um, my in-stock trade haul. It came with these interesting corner things holding things together. So I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.